And we are airborne. That's good, Fitz. And chase you in position, uh, just so we can retract the gear when we're ready. All right. Okay, look good. Okay, you in a position for gear retraction, Bill? Yeah, we're here. Okay, gear's coming up now. This is Movie Time. Leslie Mitchell reporting. Certainly got to hand it to Colonel John Glenn, the man of the moment. Trained, conditioned and dedicated, he obviously has nerves of steel. So long a wait, so many postponements, we earthbound mortals can hardly grasp the strain of such an audio. But at last the day came when the signs were favourable. The patient work at Cape Canaveral was to reap its reward. There had been countdowns before, but this time, after last minute delays, there was to be no more disappointment. Three orbits, including manoeuvring by the Colonel himself. Mr. Jeffrey Pardo, head of Hawker Sidley's Space and Rocket Research, comments on this great American achievement. Well, the Americans, with the successful flight of Colonel Glenn, have forcibly demonstrated to the world their capability of placing a manned spacecraft into orbit, and for a considerable part of the flight under manual attitude control by the astronaut. This places the Americans in a similar position to the Russians of 10 months ago with their first manned shot. However, the American capsule is only a ton and a third compared with four and a half tons of the Vostok 1. The Russians have exploited the extra capsule weight by, of course, an orbit lasting, or several orbits lasting a day. The American problem now is to continue the development of their large booster rockets, such as the Saturn, of which they've fired one, to enable them to catch up in the booster rocket capability, the lead already established by the Russians. 